Yeah, I want to turn now to the Notting Hill Carnival because a 32-year-old woman is in a life-threatening condition after being stabbed at the Notting Hill Carnival. This is according to the Metropolitan Police. Two other people have also been stabbed during the West London Festival. There's a 29-year-old man and a 24-year-old man. The numbers of police at this festival are off the scale. 7,000 officers are patrolling this year's event. Now, in terms of the numbers, it's really difficult to say how many people actually turn up to the Notting Hill Carnival. Just to give you an idea. Notting Hill is a part of London. This is a residential area. It's packed full of people. Maybe a million people, maybe two million people turn up over the course of those two days. Now, I've worked at the Notting Hill Carnival and th this is a, a very mixed area but the residents have to go to extraordinary lengths to try and keep their properties safe. They have to board up the properties. Uh, there are huge problems with drugs. There's problems with violence, knife crime as you've seen. Uh, Mike Neville yesterday was talking about two-tier policing going on. The people blatantly taking drugs in in front of police officers actually uh, making very suggestive comments to the police officers themselves as well the police in a very difficult position here because of course you've got people who are drunk who are maybe high on various substances and they have to try and keep disruption to a minimum and try and keep law and order and I used to work for the police looking after the police as a medical doctor the operation itself is amazing so there are marquees put up to feed the police. Imagine feeding 7,000 police officers and actually giving them some rest uh, whilst they are on a continuous duty over those two days for the bank holiday weekend. I said this yesterday as well. My boss used to say the best policeman at Carnival is the rain. When it's sunny like today, people drink more and so the behaviour tends to get worse. So we know that the alleged crimes include an assault on emergency workers, assault possession with intent to supply sexual offences and robbery and as I said, it's very challenging indeed. Mike Neville, as I mentioned, said that officers are hesitant to make arrests because they're worried about being called racist. He said this is the ultimate in two-tier policing because people are smoking drugs openly, police officers being abused, dancing with female officers to the point of sexual abuse. I challenge anybody to do the same thing on the way to a Millwall football game. And... I can't help notice that we've got a major problem with knife crime. Every single year, people are stabbed. And this also coincides, actually, coincidentally, by a zombie, zombie knife amnesty and compensation scheme, which starts today. This is uh, for those people who possess zombie-style knives and machetes. It starts today, and essentially, uh, they are trying to get people to hand in zombie knives. There is, a, there is a financial reward for doing so. There's an amnesty period. This is before a new law comes into force on the 24th of September, which will cover the manufacture, supply, sale, possession and importation of these weapons, and not before time, in my opinion. Joining me now is Alison Cope, who is an anti-violence campaigner. Good afternoon, Alison. Good afternoon. Thank you so much um, for joining me this afternoon. I'm deeply worried about the levels of knife crime in this country. The fact is it seems so easy for kids to carry knives in the first place. I don't even understand why kids are carrying knives, let alone zombie knives. And I know this has enormous resonance for you because of your own personal trauma. Yeah, um, my only son Joshua was murdered in 2013, a single stab wound, and he passed away seven hours after receiving that injury. And since then, I've worked incredibly hard trying to make young people understand the reality of carrying a knife, but also those in power um, to try and make them see that we, we've needed to prioritise this for a very long time. We're now in a position where it's proving very difficult to police and manage the high levels of knife crime that we're seeing in the, this country. I, I really am terribly sorry uh, for, your, for your loss. And you have turned this, this terrible uh, adversity into something positive and you are doing great work. Could you explain to listeners and viewers why kids feel the need to carry knives? Yeah, there's different reasons. Um, the work I do in schools, I'm um, exposed to around 4,000 young people a week. What they're telling me is that they're frightened. They're frightened that you know, when they go out of their house, that they could be confronted with somebody carrying a knife. And it's a vicious cycle that they're scared and they make the wrong choice, which is to arm themselves, prepared for something that's unlikely to happen. Social media has fueled a lot of the fear. We've then got those that carry it because they intend to com commit crime. 
those that carry it because of mental health issues. There's so many factors behind knife crime, which is why I think it's been very difficult for the government and those in power to sit back and think to resolve knife crime is going to take such a huge amount of work, such a huge investment. Their priorities change. They, you know, we need somebody to really be focused on knife crime and youth violence and keep it a focus and keep it a priority. And, and in terms of that, as you say, it's the wrong choice. If you decide that you're frightened, so therefore you carry a knife, actually that increases your risk. Totally, totally. And we're seeing an increase of young people with no convictions. The young man that killed my son had no convictions, wasn't a gang member, wasn't a drug dealer. He was scared and a minor altercation became life-changing for everybody involved. And I think it's so important that we really do start to make this compulsory because there are many young people in this country that we need to support their mindset. And that mindset is it will never be acceptable to even consider, let alone carry a knife in this country. The consequences, we're all seeing it now. And the work that you do, and you've set up the Joshua Ribera Achievement Awards to recognise and celebrate achievements of young people uh, and to making those positive choices. How open are young people to the messages that you are giving them? Um, I feel very honoured that a lot of them are, and I think it's about, you know, young people seem very desensitised when we're constantly saying to them, don't carry a knife, you could go to prison, um, etc etc because what they're actually seeing on the street is well my friend got caught with a knife they never went to prison yeah. so it's quite hard to get that message across i think because i'm so honest and open that it was actually my son's behavior that was negative but he turned it around and ultimately a choice to pick up a knife and carry it to a normal event resulted in a young man being you know sentenced to life in prison i have to make them think about their life their choices because prison sadly is full of young people that have made the wrong choices but to get to that point of stronger sentencing we have to have a victim and i really want to try and prevent as many victims as we can because anybody that's been stabbed or involved in knife crime that's a, a lifelong trauma that will stay with them so we need to be doing more and i can do what i can but if we all stepped up and united in the approach we'd save more young people now, the Conservative government tried to ban in 2016 of these knives, but there was a loophole at the time. Now, this new legislation closes that loophole, makes it an imprisonable offence to own, make, transport or sell a wide range of these so-called statement knives. I mean, I assume you will welcome this. I was listening to an interview on this station earlier on. The fact is that there is paperwork to go with that, and I'm just worried that if you go in and hand in one of these knives and you have to fill in a form with your name and stuff, I'm just not sure that... You young people are going to do that you're absolutely right um you know prior to the announcement of the amnesty are we have we got a great relationship from young people with police not always i think we should have done you know a lot of work prior to this to engage with young people gain the trust of young people and get the organizations that are working with young people to support this amnesty so that there's like a go between from the police to the young people and it concerns me greatly that we're asking young people to leave their homes with these weapons, mm. sometimes travelling two miles, four miles to a police station, a knife bin. How have we safeguarded other young people and the public from young people carrying these weapons to the knife bins and police stations? So in principle, it's a great idea. And I do hope many of these weapons are handed in. But when we look at it, it might not be as successful as we wanted. I don't know whether you can shed any light on this. Just events like the Notting Hill Carnival, it's very difficult to explain, unless you've been there, what it's like. But you've got hundreds of thousands of people squeezed into tiny streets, which really aren't fit for purpose. Really, I think it does need to move. I think it's a shame it has to move, but I think it does have to move. Uh, but at the same time, I just wonder what, why people feel the need, A, to take a knife to a festival like that, and secondly, the need to use it. Is this also the, the heady mix of alcohol, probably illegal drugs um all of it or everything you've said it's we've got lots of factors emotion we don't know you know what has led to the stabbings that we've seen um if for example it's a targeted attack 
emotion, alcohol, we then know moving forward what we need to try and prevent. So um, I think the police have done an amazing job with that amount of people. We have to give them credit. Moving forward, I think the carnival has become so popular and expanded to a, a level now that we do need to really look at the numbers because it's very hard to police that high. You wouldn't have a concert with a million people. You wouldn't have mm. a football match with a million people. And it's an amazing event. We need to hold on to, you know, the reason Notting Hill was originally created, the diversity, the community element, but how can we do that moving forward to safeguard the public? It needs to be considered how they do that is going to be very difficult. But I think credit to the police, anybody that's taken a knife to a family day or an event that's so positive, you know, they should bow their heads in shame because they've intentionally taken that knife out at the house and that knife is only going to be used for harm. So, you know, again, credit to the police. There could have been a lot more issues than we saw, but three stabbings is three too many. And finally, if I can, what advice would you give to parents who are listening or watching to this if they're worried about their, their child and whether they may be carrying a knife or indeed tempted to carry a knife? For me, it's asking what seems like a simple question because it's a, such a difficult subject. I would say to any young person, you've seen the news, you see things on social media, what percentage of others do you think carry a knife? If a young person says 90%, 70%, 40%, something somewhere has frightened that young person and then if your child is scared it's about trying to have a conversation speaking to the schools when they return in september speaking to the local police youth services the pccs and saying um there are concerns there are issues i need some support for my young person can you help help me with that so speak to your young children in the best way that you can and if you feel you need support try and reach out and get that support and if you're finding it difficult to get that support keep knocking that door until you do Alison, thank you so much for your time uh, brilliant brilliant uh, advice there as well Alison cope anti-violence campaigner